When I was just a little boy, I asked my mother, what will I be? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Well, maybe I'd better not repeat what she said, because suffice to say, it wasn't the words of comfort I was looking for about my future. But my dear old mother, like so many mothers, was full of worldly wisdom and some fantastic cake recipes. <laughs> but when it came to looking at tomorrow, it was all a case of que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. The future was not hers to see. But for us, however, if we want the security of knowing our hard-earned money is doing the most it can for us, if we want the peace of mind that comes with clear and understandable planning, and if we want the financial independence that we'll all work so long and hard for, then que sera, sera simply can't be part of our vocabulary. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the future really can be ours to see. Now, I know what you'd probably be thinking. Has this chap got a crystal ball? Is he clairvoyant? Well, alas, the answer to those two questions is, no, I don't. But what I do have, like everybody else in this room, is a very good guide to what tomorrow holds. Because tomorrow, just like today, is simply a little bit of history repeating. If we want to know what lies ahead, then we have to look behind. Because history can shine a clear light for us to see by. Now, before we begin our journey to the past, let's have a little look at today. We currently sit in the ashes of a global economic meltdown that began back in 2007. This is a meltdown, let's have no doubts here, that we'll all be paying for for many years to come in the form of higher taxes, reduced benefits and services, longer working lives, and if we're not very careful, much poorer and much shorter retirements. Now the cast of characters most closely associated with this economic malaise that we sit in today, central bankers, economic ministers and CEOs of leading banks seem to have no problem standing up right now and telling us we didn't see it coming. We couldn't have predicted what was about to happen. So that's why we didn't rein in the ludicrous lending practices that went on. We didn't draft legislation to head off the worst of what befell us. And we didn't rein in the over-expectation of the general public. They didn't get it. So perhaps it should give us all great comfort and help us sleep at night to know that this is the same cast of characters that is charged with putting our global economy back on track. But is it true? Is it true that everybody was blind to what was coming? Well, on the 27th of November 2007, I took all of our clients out of the market as pension clients, portfolio clients, all out, and we went to cash. And there we stayed until the summer of 2009, thus avoiding one of the greatest downsides in stock market history. Why? Why did I do that? Because frankly, the alarm bells were ringing, loud and clear, sounded by the same people that now tell us, didn't see it coming, that was far back as 2005, the then head of the Federal Reserve Board, Alan Greenspan, said in an interview, and I quote, if the pernicious drift towards fiscal instability in the United States and elsewhere is not arrested and is compounded by the protectionist reversal of globalization, the adjustment process could be quite painful for the world economy. 
Wow, thank you. His colleague at the Fed, Donald Cohen, said the next year, if real estate prices begin to erode, then homeowners should not expect to see the gains of recent years preserved. But they didn't get it. And you know, when these institutions and these people tell me they didn't see it coming, I believe them. Because I believe, like so many rabbits, they were blinded. They were caught in the headlights of the oncoming juggernaut called human greed. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a fully paid up, card-carrying capitalist. For me, greed is good. Thank you, Michael. But so is fear. I know of no greater motivators and movers of people than these two basic human emotions. But either one of the two, if left unchecked, unfettered, has the ability to pull the wool over the eyes, ears and mouths of the most intelligent and experienced people. Now the wool pulling for our current situation began back in 1999 with the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Banking Act. Who's heard of that one? Very few. Well done. It was a wonderful piece of legislation that had stood the test of time. It had been drafted by lawmakers who were sitting in the dust bowl economy of the United States in the 1930s. And they were in no mood to see a return to the excesses of the banking and broking community. And so they shackled them. And so it was that that legislation spanned decades. But then in 1999, the banking and broking community got together with the then Treasury Secretary, Larry Summers, referred to as the devil incarnate by some people, and they drafted a new piece of legislation, and it was called the Financial Services Modernization Act. <coughs> At the stroke of a pen, the fetters were off, and greed could run rampant again. It was the first step that led to a tsunami of capital flooding the world economy and the creation of some of the most complex <laughs> final structures we've ever seen. At the time, the Financial Services Modernization Act was hailed as necessary if America was going to hold its head up high in a globalizing world. Now, who ever said that the road to hell isn't paved with good intentions? After all, all we need to do is ask the Dutch. <laughs> <laughs>